In today's video, I'm going to show a game from the 1988 National Tournament between Ed Bruck and Paul Davis. Paul Davis is the best player Virginia has ever produced and is still alive today at the age of 101. Ed Bruck was a grandmaster from New York who could hold his own against anybody. This game is important for its historical implications as well as for its instructive points. It took place in the last round of the event and the leaderboard was still very close at the top. Paul was not only able to win this exciting and intense game, but also go on to win the event and challenge Marion Tinsley for the world title the following year. This tournament and game would go down as one of Paul's finest in his career. I'm going to play through the game without my commentary and analysis and then play it again with it. So let's begin. All right, so let's begin. Ed Bruck was handling the red pieces and Paul Davis was handling the white pieces and this is the three move opening they balloted. So here we go. And red resigned at this point, and white wins the game. Okay, there was a lot to unpack there, and I'm now going to go through this game and provide my commentary and analysis. So let's start with the three move ballot itself. This opening is called the Millberry, and there's really good scope for both sides here. There is some edge to white, and white correctly moves here next. White can go here, uh, transpose in the other openings. Uh, but this is really the best next move. This move for red is also very common and widely seen in master play nowadays. This is also a good formation, but this is probably best. White, again, has his choice of moves. Uh, this is also good, uh, but really this is a strong move which can form into the pioneer formation. And red correctly, exchanges this piece off here. And now typically this move is seen next for white, but Paul decides to move here next, which is also very good and can transpose into another different openings. Red goes here. Red can also go here first, but this is good. And now this is a pretty aggressive move. It's very good for white, it's sound for red, but it is an aggressive move. And now red will begin the either direct or indirect attack on this piece. And what Ed does next is this move, which is actually a little weak. The correct sequence of moves here in this formation is here. And this is the standard formation in this opening. Uh, 
uh, but instead, Ed runs the piece off here, giving white a little bit more edge. Now, exchanging this piece, it's a little weak, but again, it continues the attack on white's double corner. White cannot go here next to seemingly pin this piece as red can just go here, the jump, and then the two for two, and red securing a winning ending there. So instead, white is going to develop its single corner. Now, this is where red starts to downfall its game a little bit. Sinking the piece here is weak. And generally speaking, in a lot of games, having a piece on this square is known as the dog hole, and it's generally to be avoided, as is this piece here, this square here. This is called the dust hole. Avoiding these squares is probably best practice, but Ed does go into the dog hole there. White's going to continue to develop towards the center, and Red doesn't have very many options at this point left, so instead it will start a development like this. And this is probably the best move. Other replies are weaker and may lose. Again, white is just going to hold firm and let red do the work here. And again, not a whole lot of room left for red. Now this move was seen in older texts, uh, such as Master Play, uh, but really this is probably the best move. And now this move, Ed had actually been in this situation before from the other side uh, with the white pieces. And this is a correction from an old move that was played back in 1882 against James Wiley. Uh, this move here. So this is really seen as a modern day correction. White's going to move out of the way. And now just trying to shore up this position right here. Red just can't go in for a king because these two pieces will be trapped. So red is going to continue to advance. And now a star move for white is here to try and pin this piece on this square because no, it can no longer advance. So again, red is going to bring up these pieces to try to king. But this is actually where Ed falters here. The correct drawing sequence should be to move this piece and get a king here instead of going into crown this way. And again, we'll show you why in a couple different moves here. So it goes in the king there, the king, and now red gets the king. Now this is the move of the tournament, obviously the move of the game, but this is really where Paul won the game here, and that's this phenomenal pitch here. Absolutely stunning pitch. What this does is now this piece no longer can make any more inroads with the hope to exchange it off with when this king being on this square here. So instead, these two pieces are now trapped uh, really by this one piece here. And now white is going to attack this vulnerable piece here by moving here next. And now red is clearly in a lot of trouble here. It's going to pitch here first and then try to escape with hopefully releasing these pieces here, but that's just there's just no time for that. So now white is just going to wait out and get another king. The white king moves here, trapping this piece. And the red king doesn't have very many options left. It cannot advance into this square here or else the game will be completely trapped. So, and now Ed resigned the game and Paul won this game and again would later go on to win the tournament. So an absolutely fascinating game and a, a wonderful performance by Paul.
Even though Paul Davis would lose to Marion Tinsley in the world title match at the Checkers Hall of Fame in Petal, Mississippi in 1989, nothing could take away from his outstanding and nearly flawless performance in this tournament. I hope you enjoyed watching this historic game, and thanks, as always, for watching.